Oxidative stress is a hallmark of aging. More specifically, it's found within the mitochondrial dysfunction hallmark. So with that in mind, how can we quantify oxidative stress? Most commonly, it's measured by quantifying oxidative damage to nucleic acids, including DNA and RNA, but also oxidative damage to lipids and proteins. But metabolite ratios can also provide information about oxidative stress, with the most popular being the reduced to oxidized glutathione ratio. So in the presence of oxidative stress, in this case, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, glutathione in its reduced state, GSH, more specifically the thiol group, SH, becomes oxidized such that the two molecules of reduced glutathione become one molecule of oxidized glutathione, GSSG. So each sulfur forms a disulfide bridge. So the two molecules become one. Two reduced become one oxidized for glutathione. So with that in mind, a high GSSG to GSSGSH ratio is indicative of relatively high levels of H2O2 or oxidative stress. Now, unfortunately, GSH and GSSG individually are not yet available, commercially available in the United States. We can measure total levels of glutathione, but that doesn't tell us about the ratio between reduced and oxidized. But the good news is the oxidized to reduced glutathione ratio isn't the only way to evaluate oxidative stress, especially when using metabolite ratios. So in this video, I'm going to go over two examples, cysteine to cysteine and methionine sulfoxide to methionine. So first, cysteine to cysteine is similar to the GSSG to GSH ratio. So starting with two molecules of cysteine, the amino acid cysteine, we can see that this amino acid also has sulfhydryl groups, SH. And in the presence of oxidative stress, those sulfhydryl groups become oxidized such that the two cysteine molecules become one cysteine. And you can see that the sulfhydryl groups, the individual sulfhydryl groups, have now become oxidized forming a disulfide bridge so again, the two molecules of cysteine get converted into one, the oxidized molecule, cysteine. And this is very similar to what glutathione looks like in its reduced and oxidized state. Now, as a side note, note that the cysteine, the oxidized version, can be reduced back into cysteine, but that's a topic for another video. So when considering the cysteine to cysteine ratio, that would be a relatively high amount of cysteine relative to cysteine would be indicative of relatively high oxidative stress. So what's optimal? In a paper that was just recently published last month, and that paper and all of the other papers in this video will be in the video's description, we can see that the cysteine to cysteine ratio increases during aging. And we can see that by looking at the age beta coefficient or age beta is positive, which, which shows that uh, with increasing age, there's an increase in the oxidized to reduce ratio for cysteine to cysteine. And this is a significant association, as you can see the p-value and false discovery rate, FDR, are both below 0.05. So in terms of what's optimal for this ratio, cysteine divided by cysteine, the goal should be, or I think the goal should be, to avoid an age-related increase. Now note that also associated with age in this paper was the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio. And if you're familiar with the channel, that ratio may be familiar because I did a video on, a video on it as it's in the de novo NAD synthesis pathway. So with that in mind, what's my data? So in April of 2023, I sent blood for at-home metabolomics. And again, if you're familiar with the channel, the IOLO kit may look familiar because I've made videos looking at kynurenine and tryptophan, again, as a part of the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, but also it includes measurements of taurine and polymines too, which both taurine and polymines extend lifespan. And in addition to these few metabolites, the IOLO kit contains data for more than 500 metabolites. So I've got a whole bunch of videos in mind uh, f in terms of uh, their metabolites and how we can use that to potentially slow aging for various organ systems. So if you're interested in using this kit, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. All right, so to answer the question for what's my data, we can see that for cysteine, relatively low 0.05 micromolar, which is equivalent to 50 na nanomolar. This is relatively low. And then when considering my, uh, how much uh, cysteine that I have in my blood, 9.5, approximately 9.5 micromolar, we can see that my ratio for cysteine to cysteine is relatively low at 0.06. And again, in terms of what's optimal, the goal in future tests is to avoid an age-related increase. So stay tuned for future videos and we can see how well I'm doing or not to uh, minimize an age-related increase for this ratio. All right, next up is the methionine sulfoxide to methionine ratio.
and the methionine sulfoxide to methionine ratio can also be used as an index of oxidative stress. And that's what we can see here. So starting with the amino acid methionine, it too has a sulfur atom, which can then be oxidized, more specifically in the case of H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide, such that its sulfur atom then becomes oxidized. And you can see that it has an S double bond O, that's oxidized sulfur, thereby forming methionine sulfoxide. And again, as a side note, this is a reversible reaction where methionine uh, sulfoxide can be reduced with uh, an enzyme, methionine sulfoxide reductase, back into methionine. But again, that's a story for another day. So in terms of what's optimal for this ratio, in a paper that was published in 2022, although they didn't compare the ratio between methionine sulfoxide and methionine, individually, methionine sulfoxide was shown to be higher in centenarians, or people who were close to centenarian status, their average age was 97 years, when compared with their offspring uh, and spouses of the offspring that had an average age of 67 years. So in other words, there was an age-related increase for methionine sulfoxide as a part of this index of oxidative stress. And when considering that oxidative stress increases during aging, just like cysteine divided by cysteine, avoiding the age-related increase or avoiding an age-related increase for methionine sulfoxide divided by methionine is atop the list. So what's my data? We can't, we can't avoid an age-related increase if we don't know what our data is, so what's my data? So consider this, this is baseline data. I, I can't make any definitive conclusions from it because there, I wasn't able to find any published data for the methionine sulfoxide to methionine ratio and how it changes during aging. But when looking at my data, we can see that my methionine sulf sulfoxide levels are 0.79 micromolar relative to cysteine, another oxidized molecule. This is relatively higher. So the goal for me is to reduce my levels of methionine sulfoxide. And when divided by methionine, I get a ratio of 0.05. So again, this is my baseline and stay tuned for future videos using IOLO's kit to see how well I'm able to reduce my levels of oxidative stress by looking at metabolite ratios. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, as mentioned in this video, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, and note that their panel of biomarkers is almost exclusively different from the at-home metabolomics, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.